My goal is to introduce to you 12 things we know about how that extraordinary brain works. The brain rules cover such topics as exercise, memory, stress, sleep, vision. The supporting research for each of my brain rules must first be published in a peer-reviewed journal and then successfully replicated. The problem is that so much of what we do in our modern world ignores these brain rules. We try to drive while talking on our cell phones, even though it is literally impossible for our brains to multitask when it comes to paying attention. We have created high-stress office environments, even though a stressed brain is significantly less productive. Our schools are designed so that most real learning has to occur at home. That could be funny if it weren't so harmful. Let's find out why. Scandal number one, where the only mystery lies in why we're not fixing it. If you were to design an almost perfect anti-brain learning environment, it would look something like this. And if you were to design an almost perfect anti-brain working environment, it would look something like this. Why? Because tiny proteins called BDNFs are actually created when you exercise and act like miracle grow for your brain. Brain rule number one, exercise boosts brain power. So, this is your child's brain in the classroom. This is your child's brain on the playground. At least if he's moving. And likewise, this is your brain at work. And this is your brain walking to work. Let's look at that in the actual setting. Here are your kids in the classroom. And here are your kids on the playground. And, once again, here is your employee at work. And here is your employee on the way to work. The problem lies in the fact that we measure distance today in terms of the space between the refrigerator, bathroom, and couch. Says Robert Hutchins, whenever I feel like exercise, I lie down until the feeling passes. Our ancestors, on the other hand, walked an average of 12 miles a day, and hence the brain developed as a survival organ that was designed to solve problems in an unstable environment in almost constant motion. If our ancestors had laid around, well, Let's just say that evolution didn't favor the sedentary types. So, what are we to do? Well, if I were an employer, I would want this brain working for me instead of this one. Wouldn't that just be good business? Motivated employees who are more productive, since exercise aids all areas of executive function, like concentration, impulse control, foresight, problem solving. We'd get employees who are more creative and equally significant, employees who are healthier. Do you know that Starbucks actually spends more on healthcare costs than they do on coffee beans? What if we could cut those costs by having healthier and happier employees? How do we do this? Well, maybe we could use our brains. How about encouraging employees to have walking meetings? or take phone calls on the move. You can create a treadmill conference room or a moving workstation where you could do your emails while you exercised. Or try a lower tech solution. Or mix it all together and get creative. We still don't know much about how the brain works, but the little we do know suggests that the way we behave at school or at work needs some serious rethinking. 